Hello, cinema fans. This is Matt. So yes, I'm bringing back my comic book reviews, but I'm going to go at it a bit differently this time. But with that said, let's get into it. This is Spider-Man Torment Part 1. So what we have here is a commentary by a very mysterious person setting up the setting of New York City and the environment and the people and, you know, the, the things that happened in the city and the feel of the city, just setting all that up and the, really getting the reader the, the, the idea of New York City and the feel of it. And you see at the start of this issue, this mysterious person has given this commentary saying that look at all these people below in New York City and that one person that rises above and that is Spider-Man. Given this idea that Spider-Man is a very unique, special character. That he's amongst them, but he's above all of them. And of course you got here a mugger trying to rob this lady, but this lady is very suicidal to the point that you know she, basically the guy's threatening to do more harm to her if she don't hand over her purse but uh basically she's like go ahead please do it kind of you know very depressed at that low state in life i think some people have been there i've been there before but you know it, it's pretty sad and again given an idea of new york city and you know there's the good and then there's the bad and amongst the good and the bad, and the one that's above all of that, and that is Spider-Man saving the day. And what you see here is this mysterious person really just hyping up Spider-Man, you know, giving the slang, saying like, you know, his web line, which again, can be adventurous. Like just given this feeling of that Spider-Man is this adventurous uh, guardian above all the people below in New York City. And again, we have this mysterious person trying to give the uh, idea of the environment of New York City, but this time more of a dark and twisted manner. And unlike Spider-Man rising above all that and being above all that, then we get this kind of same thing flip scenario, but rising through the below of New York City, the, the, the creature of the below, while Spider-Man is above, this one is below. Kind of like the devil and God complex, the kind of that idea of that. And here we have this person giving the commentary on the whole conversation and relationship between Peter and MJ. It's like this mysterious person is trying to direct or give an idea of the environment, even in the setting of this conversation between Peter and MJ for the reader. And what we have here in this conversation between Peter and MJ is that Peter's kind of like giving this, you know, reflection on the fact that, you know, he feels that he's been doing this for so long and faced so many great foes that he questions why these like small time criminals tried to stop him, try to go at him when they know and he knows or really him knowing that. There's so many foes that he's taken on and gone up against, either defeated or just held his own against them, is that why would these small time criminals with no powers, no nothing, just, you know, the typical, you know, mugger, typical bank robber, why even try to, you know, go up against Spider-Man when he comes after them? In a way, like you see Peter kind of being more, you know, cocky about himself, you know, being more confident about himself. Meanwhile, you know, MJ just being there to listen, but also playing off and very cutesy, you know, the typical, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend married relationship. Something we don't see nowadays between Peter and MJ, but that's besides the point. <laughs> but then we flip over to, again, this mysterious person, you know, given this commentary on the setting, the environment and how more grungy more dark it is more disgusting and then we see the lizard you know being this force of evil about to attack these group of robbers but unlike spider-man being there to save the day lizard has a different idea in mind which again being the force of evil and man does he get menacing oh my god like he's just going at it and as it's displayed that, you know, Lizard being the monster that he is right now, but this mysterious person is also given that commentary, kind of given the idea how much of a monstrous, uh, vicious being that he is, um, uh, unholy monstrosity. 
being exactly what he was created to be. And that's simply being the perfect killing machine. And, you know, it, it's really given this idea that it, meanwhile you have Peter being this, you know, hero, this guardian, the way that this mysterious person is setting that up. On the flip side, you have this on the below side of New York City being this uh, monstrous, villainous, vicious killing machine. And that's something that's very interesting and it, very compelling to see the, the uh, to compare and contrast of Peter or Spider-Man and the Lizard. And then we flip over to see this typical married couple, MJ and Peter. Well, you know, we never see this nowadays, but, you know, Peter getting ready for work and talking about his normal day job. Meanwhile, getting ready to be Spider-Man, his other job. And before we switch over to Peter and MJ, we get this little glimpse of this mysterious character and, you know, this the setting that it's within itself setting up for the potential reveal at the end of the story. Just given this idea that oh things are about to get very worse very quick. And then you see Spider-Man swinging off to be Spider-Man and him having a very little commentary within himself. You know, just, you know, talking about how he wishes that MJ had the same powers that he does so she could experience what he's experiencing, this the enjoyment of just swinging around the city and whatnot. And this is just a very beautiful, amazing scene, just seeing Spider-Man, you know, being the typical Spider-Man that he is, you know, wishing that MJ could have the powers like he has, but also making this little joke that he wonders if how Thor manages when he's, you know, flying in air and whatnot, because he has a cape and he doesn't have a cape and it's pretty funny. But also it's just it gives us, you know, again, this idea, but without the mysterious person, but, you know, just you know, getting a glimpse of, you know, our typical good old friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And then on the flip side, you have this typical New Yorker head his way to work, but taking a shortcut and kind of given this idea again, you know, this mysterious person's and, you know, third person commentary, given this idea that these people are just like, you know, prey, a bunch of prey for this dark creature, this, this, this dark force, AKA the lizard, you know, we see in this panel that, you know, this person just minding his business, headed to work and he just attacks them from you know this how this mysterious person setting this up or really giving this commentary or giving this idea for the lizard that this is a force of darkness a force of evil the you know the shadow attacking this uh, this typical new yorker and feasting on him and again we get this commentary but this time on spider-man and the lizard and that Spider-Man being a force of good and then the lizard being a force of evil and how they're about to collide and everything which is pretty cool and setting up for issue two. Bro, I really love this issue. It keeps you invested and makes you excited for the next issue. Keeps you at the edge of your seat, you know, given this idea for Spider-Man and also the lizard. And, you know, the, eventually these two were about to collide. And I just love how they set that up in this through the commentary and the dialogue versus the action, which is there. But they do it through the dialogue, which is pretty cool. And uh, I really like this issue and I love where they're going with this. And yeah. And I absolutely love the art style. Top McFarlane is just an amazing artist and, you know, a legendary artist to this day. Overall, I have to give Spider-Man Torment Part 1 a 4.5 out of 5. But with that said, like this video, comment down below what you liked about this issue and this whole run. And also your favorite issues from Top McFarlane. Uh, sub for more. And yeah, peace.